Dangerous Liaisons, tonight's Dateline special continues. Here again is Stone Phillips. Welcome back. As you may know, for its 2002 Persons of the Year cover, Time magazine chose three whistleblowers, two from corporate America and one from the FBI. Time called them heroes for risking their jobs to do the right thing by exposing serious problems within the organizations they served. The woman you're about to meet faced a choice no less daunting. By releasing confidential records, she could help thousands of people who claimed they'd been wronged, but not without danger to herself. She would be risking not only her job, but her freedom as well. Here's Chris Hansen. Fires, hurricanes, earthquakes. If you make it through a disaster with your life and your loved ones, there's gas leaking everywhere. You count yourself lucky and then count on insurance to take care of almost everything else. It's, it's all gone. It's, it's all gone. And rarely has insurance been more critical than in January 1994, when a magnitude 6.7 quake came rumbling through Northridge, north of Los Angeles. Hey, get up. 72 people were killed, 12,000 injured. Houses, apartment buildings, and businesses looked like they'd been bombed. The damage stretched over 350 square miles. The Northridge quake was one of the most costly urban disasters in U.S. history. The price to fix it all, some $40 billion. A staggering amount, but that's why people paid those premiums, just in case the worst ever happened. That's what Barbara Sugar thought. I had insurance with 20th Century and uh, paid that regularly. You were a loyal policyholder. Yes, I was. Wrote that check every time it was due. You bet your life I did. And the reason you did that was because if something like this happened, you wanted that company to show you loyalty back. Of course. There would be no question. They would reimburse me for the loss that I had. But that is not what happened. When a claims adjuster from 20th Century Insurance first inspected Sugar's house, he said the damage was cosmetic and gave her $1,500. You couldn't see anything, but... Earthquake damage, though, is often hidden and hard to detect. So it wasn't until more than a year later, when Sugar was remodeling, that she found serious structural damage. Her contractor said it could cost almost $100,000 to fix it all. But by then, her insurer told her it was too late to amend her claim. I was just flabbergasted. I called them up and I said, I don't understand this. I pay these premiums for years. And you, you sent out an appraiser to examine my house who was here for... 10 minutes, now I find when I'm remodeling all this work that needs to be done on it that I feel is should be covered under the policy. I would suspect that... When the company refused to pay for the damage, Sugar felt she had no choice but to sue. Barbara Sugar is just one of thousands of policyholders who claimed they were cheated by their insurance companies after the earthquake. The California Department of Insurance, the agency that regulates this state's $80 billion insurance industry, was bombarded with complaints. But it would be years before anyone would realize the severity of the problems homeowners said they were having. Finally, in April of 1997, more than three years after the earthquake, it looked like the complaints from Sugar and so many others had been heard. A visit to the earthquake zone by California's insurance commissioner, Chuck Quackenbush, made headlines when the rising political star and possible Republican candidate for governor pointed the finger at insurance companies that weren't covering claims. Quackenbush even toured Sugar's home and held a news conference right in her front yard. You had to feel pretty good about that. I am totally impressed. I have to tell you, I really felt he was going to drive the wagon into the insurance companies. Cindy Osias thought so, too. Osias was one of Quackenbush's tireless staffers. A lawyer with the Department of Insurance for 11 years, she was a hardworking but inconspicuous bureaucrat, quietly dedicated to fighting for homeowners. It was part of Osias' job to monitor complaints about insurance companies after the Northridge quake. How soon before the first complaints started to trickle in that perhaps some insurance companies weren't handling this the proper way? It took just a few months for the first ones to come in. 
As time went on, the complaints were getting more serious. So starting in mid-1997, Osias and a team of colleagues spent more than a year investigating some of the biggest insurance companies operating in California. As they dug, an alarming pattern emerged. I thought that the companies were generally considering their own interests far above the interests of their insureds. Basically, that in these cases, the insurance companies did not deal fairly with the policyholders. Right. That was our conclusion. They had not been treated fairly. Specifically, Cindy Osias and her team alleged that the companies grossly underestimated earthquake damages and lowballed claims. In some cases, entire rooms were never inspected. Our estimate of uh, a per claim underpayment was probably on the average fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. Was this standard operating procedure for some insurance companies? Yes, that was the indication from the claim files, right. I'm working on it as fast as we can. And the alleged violations were not just in a few claims. All state appeared to have violated the law in 24% of claims reviewed. Farmers Home Group, 45%. 20th Century, 75%. And State Farm, the state's biggest insurer, showed violations in nearly half of the claims examined. All of the companies denied the allegations. But Insurance Commissioner Quackenbush seemed determined to play hardball, demanding the companies pay homeowners what they deserved and pay fines for not dealing fairly in the first place. It was a huge sum. Together, the companies were asked to pay a total of $3.4 billion. So you had come up with what you thought was a reasonable settlement. Right. Pay people what they were entitled to under their insurance contracts. Uh, pay a reasonable amount in civil penalty to us and reimburse us for our costs of investigation and so on. After months of negotiations, Quackenbush and the insurers reached settlements. Collectively, the six insurance companies would pay $13.5 million. The deals were touted as a big success for Quackenbush, but Cindy Osias was stunned. I was appalled. I just couldn't believe what I was reading. What her boss was hailing as a victory, Osias saw as a defeat for policyholders. The $13.5 million the insurers agreed to pay was less than one-half of one percent of the $3.4 billion Quackenbush had initially demanded. And to make matters worse, more than half the money wasn't even going to the quake victims, but instead would be paid as tax-deductible donations to nonprofit foundations for earthquake education and research. So instead of paying settlements, money that would go to, in many cases, the earthquake victims. These insurance companies were allowed to pay much less to these funds. Right. To me, even more outrageous is the fact that the companies were not really placed under an obligation to look at the claims in a different way than they had at first. Only 20th century was ordered to stop the practices that got it into trouble in the first place. But neither 20th Century nor any of the other companies admitted any wrongdoing. And so the companies could continue to inadequately investigate damage um, and offer unreasonably low settlement amounts. And there was more. The agreement with State Farm, considered by Osias and her team to be one of the worst offenders, said the company actually acted in good faith. Osias was outraged. I would assume that State Farm asked for that language, but to give in like that when so much evidence existed to the contrary was just outrageous. Based upon the cases you reviewed, yes. did State Farm Insurance act in good faith? No. And as if all that weren't enough, under the agreements, any violations committed by the insurance companies would be kept secret from the very people who had been harmed, the policyholders. Osias says she felt angry, frustrated, and betrayed by the man whose job it was to regulate insurers and protect customers, her boss, Insurance Commissioner Chuck Quackenbush. You had spent years mm -hmm. developing cases, yes. uncovering evidence, in an effort to get the insurance companies to do the right thing for the policyholders. 
Yes. It was a slap in, in the collective face of, of the department. The way I saw it when, when all of the settlements had come in was that the entire department had turned its back on the victims. And that was certainly against my will. Osias wondered why her boss would allow the insurance companies to get off virtually scot-free. In time, she would find out, but not before taking a drastic step. Cynthia Osias was about to risk it all. Her job, her law license, even the possibility of going to prison, all to expose what she believed was a terrible injustice. Secret documents and a moment of truth. I had a knot in my stomach. Yeah, I did. It was, it was quite a moment. When Dangerous Liaisons, a Dateline special continues.